you've been in a lot of films. Yeah. Uh, you were in Higher Learning. Yes. And Tupac was supposed to be in the film. Yes. And Leonardo DiCaprio was supposed to be in the yes. film playing you. Yes. Uh, how did Leonardo DiCaprio lose, <laughs> lose the role? Well, he didn't lose the role. Like, it was originally Tupac, it was originally Leonardo DiCaprio, it was originally Gwyneth Paltrow in the Jennifer Connelly plot, sp spot. Oh, okay. I was going to be the Cole Hauser spot. And Tupac had to pull out of the film because of, um, they, they, they wouldn't finance the film because he had gotten arrested. Oh, okay. Um, so when Tupac dropped out, then Leonardo dropped out, and then Gwyneth dropped out. I mean, this, this didn't happen like in a day. It happened like over a few periods. And nobody was locked in. I think Tupac was locked in. People were sort of circling around the film. This is two or three months out. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like Tupac's out, I'm, I'm, I'm bailing. It just, you know, DiCaprio's path was going to be his path. We all knew he was going to be mega. Okay, so you already knew it. You just knew. He had done, I, I forgot what he had done at the time. It was definitely before. Was um, Gilbert Grape or something? Or? He had done Gilbert Grape and he had did uh, uh, um, the movie with De Niro. And you just knew. Oh, there, right, there's yeah. been a hand, like... Brad Pitt, when I did True Romance, when I did True Romance with Brad Pitt, you knew. Yeah. He had done a couple of things, but he wasn't yeah. that guy yeah. yet. You knew that. Leonardo, you knew he was special. You knew he, he, he was all-encompassing. He had the look. He had the talent. You knew he was going to be special. Um, so when Tupac pulled out, who we, we, you knew was special too, but he's, it was, the trouble had already started. You know, then, then, then Gwyneth Paltrow pulled out and Jennifer Connelly came in, and then I switched over to Leonardo's role, which was my idea. Hmm. I wanted it. Turned out. T turned out good, but yeah. you know, like it was like he wasn't there, and I, w I always felt I was, I wasn't totally right for for the part that Cole Hauser played, the older skinhead, and I'd have to put on weight, and like I want, and I was like, I want this part. I, I knew I wanted that part, and so I talked to John about it. He had me come in, and 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 it was just me, John Singleton, and Ice Cube, and he was like, "All right, go ahead." And this is before Are We There Yet, Ice Cube. This is when Ice Cube was like, stooled the chip tooth and shit. Like, <laughs> I was such a big fan of his, and to come in yeah. there and have to like do this Remy character, and like, he was like, "Well, improv shit. Say this to him. Say that to him. Like, do your thing." Like, he wanted to see if I was ready to do it, and I like fucking was like, "Fuck you, Ice Cube. Fuck you know you fucking this and you fucking that and you know saying crazy shit." And we were just flowing, and he said, "You you got the part," and I was like, "Fuck yeah." And then, you know, we made the movie. Okay, because because you were there when Tupac and Snoop first met? Yep. Where was this? I, I was there when Tupac and Snoop Dogg met. It was the rap party for Poetic Justice, which I had a blink part in. You have to watch it quick, even if you knew it was coming. Like, it's, it's shot in silhouette. And, and I was already friends with Singleton, and Singleton said to me, you know, there's nothing really funny. I said, I want something in it. He's like, there was such a, 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 um, a thing around Tupac and, and, and with Janet Jackson and John after... Boys in the Hood, I just wanted to be a part of the film. And we had met, we had a mutual respect. I'd only done Zebrahead and I think True Romance. He's like, there's this one little thing, it's a camera. I was like, Betty, it's you and Tupac, dope. I, I, I was so impressed with Tupac as a rapper. And then when I saw him in Juice as an actor, and, and the crazy thing about Tupac is because me and Jada Pinkett were friends. We had the same agent. Oh, okay. Before she had a, gotten a part, before I had gotten a part, she kept telling my friend Tupac, my friend, I was like, Tupac? What kind of fucking name is that? She was like, Tupac, he's going to be a rapper, he's going to be an actor. And I'm like, an actor and a rapper? Because at the time, you didn't, it was, it never it was like, get the fuck out of here. She was like, I'm telling you, he's crazy talented, he's my friend, he got to stay out of trouble. If he could just, this is, we were, this is 89, 90. Yeah. 91. And, and I remember seeing that video, she showed me the VHS tape that inevitably was in that Tupac documentary, um, the really good one that got nominated for the Oscar, which I can't remember the name for, of her and him in a karaoke booth singing Parents don't, Just Don't Understand. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's, it was, yeah. and, she, and, I, and she's like, this is my friend, so this fucking guy, too, like, you know. And then, you know, I heard him on Digital Underground and then like saw Juice, but when I saw him in Juice, I was like, this motherfucker is talented. Yeah. As an actor, like I just thought that performance was like, to me it was like De Niro in Mean Streets. I was like, this fucking guy is dope. Like I'd already heard him rhyme and I was like, he's a good rhymer, he's dope. But when I saw him in Juice, I was like, I fucking, this guy's special. So I wanted to be in Poetic Justice. So he gave me that little part. I went to the after uh, the rap party for Poetic Justice. Everybody was there. Janet Jackson, Joe Torre, um, uh, Regina King, who, was, who I was a huge fan of. John was there. And it was this little spot off of La Brea, like down near Crenshaw. And um, Snoop was there. He had just come out with Deep Cover. 
And you know, oh, he had his okay. jean shit on and he had okay. his hat on and I was like, yo, I'm a big fan. What's up? He recognized me. He was like, what's up? You know, he was all shy. And I was like, yo, you, you know, we, you know, he was like, you know about my shit in New York? And I was like, hell, he had, he's, I'd never been to New York. And I was like, yo, we fuck with you, man. I was like, yo, we yeah. fuck with you hard. And he was like, thanks. You know, he's real kind of low key. And you know, we pound whatever. And then five minutes later, it was like a, a little party, not even like a big premiere. It was like, like a little sort of, like a bar with a little dance floor. Like it wasn't a big premiere party or a big rap party. And a couple of minutes later, I mean, this is 20 some years ago, but a couple of minutes later, Tupac was there I had already met. And I literally saw with my own eyes, they were like, they greeting each other. And then they were like rhyming on the mic, freestyling. Oh. And Tupac was like, I remember, I don't remember what the, the rhyme said, but I remember him saying, you know, all your homies staring at me like you want something at me. And then Snoop, and it wasn't like beef, but they were like bad, like they were kind of feeling yeah. each other. Tupac was with his little crew. Snoop was with, was with his crew and I was right there. But I remember being like, this is something not to forget. And then they like dapped each other up after this like little battle. Like, you know, they're just rhyming on the mic, but you could feel like a little sort of like, you know, putting their, their, their shit down. And then it turns out that was the same night that Snoop Dogg uh, smoked his first blunt, which should be a national holiday. And, and that Tupac <laughs> rolled for him. Like they, they obviously became friends, but I watched it with my own eyes. And there's a picture that night uh, with me, Tupac, John Singleton, and Ice Cube. And I remember they were taking a picture and then I like kind of like squeezed my way into it because I just knew it was a special, special thing to be a, to be a part of that, that, that night. It was just, there was so much energy around Tupac and excitement around Tupac and this edge around him. You could feel it. And, and, and um, it just something, yeah, I'm on the right. I never forgot it. I, and I, I remember when the picture got taken and this is before digital, but like, you see, I'm on, I'm on the right of them. Like I'm on the, they're, they're to the right of me. I was just, they were taking the picture and I kind of slid into the picture. That's why I'm, I'm up front of it. Cause I, I wanted to be in the picture, you know? It was cool. It was cool when I remember it. And you know, and I saw Tupac um, a couple more times before he passed. And you know, I mean, as a fan, you look back at that time, there was, he was so special and he was so prolific and he was so outspoken and so ahead of his time and so representative of of all the positive things about hip hop. And unfortunately, he died of the most negative thing about hip hop. Yeah. It was it was crazy, you know, like it was like because he was so everything that the the goodness of hip hop and the and the politicalness of hip hop and the swag of hip hop and the and and and, and everything dope about hip hop, but then inevitably that negativity would fuck them up.